If you have your Bibles, I'd like you to turn me to the book of Luke chapter 12 this morning, please, as we stand and we open the book. Luke chapter number 12 and verse number 1. The infallible text says, In the meantime, when there were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people, insomuch that they trod one upon another, he began to say to his disciples, First of all, Beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisee, which is hypocrisy. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light, and that which ye have spoken in the ear in closets shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him, which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, Fear him. Amen. Bless this word, Lord. In thy name I pray, amen. You can be seated. Probably the most controversial doctrine in all the Bible is the doctrine of eternal retribution. Or another word for it is hell. It is missing from the pulpits in this country, from the seminaries and the Bible colleges. Hell is no longer mentioned. It's archaic. It's anachronistic. It belongs to a different age. We're too enlightened today to hear it. We're too smart. We know too much. We certainly don't believe in the doctrine of hell. That is, we speaking in the general sense of this perverted culture that you're part of. I believe it. When you look, the, look at the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, you'll find that it begins in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 32. You'll find that it runs all the way through the book of Revelation, where there is a place where the unsaved go. You'll find the Bible has much to say about hell. But nobody ever walked the face of this earth and lived here that preached more on hell than that lowly Galilean, that, that great teacher of the Jews, that the one who set the example for us, the, the great master. No, the one who preached more on hell than any man that ever walked on the face of this earth is the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. And what he gave to you in the book of Luke chapter number 12 is as clear as it possibly can be. He said, yea, I say unto you, fear him. Now we live in a time when men boast and they brag and they arrogantly affirm that there is nothing beyond the grave. I marvel at the ignorance of a man who would set forth and say to you that he knows the unknowable. There is no way that any human being that has walked in the face of this earth can tell me what lies beyond the grave. I'll look back at you, sir, and I'll say you're a fool if you profess or if you, if you have the audacity to say to me that you know what lies beyond the grave. You don't know. You don't know. But the Bible tells us what lies beyond the grave. If you're a Bible believer, you are told and instructed right off the bat that there is something that awaits every human being that leaves the face of this earth. Either they go out into the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ and they belong to Him, or they go out into an eternal damnation and the Lord called it hell. If the Bible uses that terminology, then I can stick with the book and I can say to you, I believe the Bible. And so therefore I believe that I know what lies beyond the grave. You don't die like a dog and they bury you and it's all over with and you're forgotten and that's all there is to it. No, sir. No, sir. Somebody told you that that doesn't know what he's talking about. Once again, the arrogant profess to know the unknowable. They profess to see what can't be seen. They profess to be what cannot be, my friend. I know what lies beyond the grave because I have a Bible and I believe the Bible and I know the Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ because I know he's real. He lives in my soul today. Save me, wrote my name in the Lamb's book of life. There's not one shred of doubt in my heart that the Lord Jesus Christ is alive in eternity. He sits at the right hand of the Father in majesty upon high and he's able to save to the uttermost all that come to God. 
by him. There is a name that is of every name at the name of Jesus. I know that name. I know the one who bears that name. I know the Savior that died on the cross. I know him without a question, my friend. I met him in 1973. And if he is as real as I say he is, and he is, he lives if I say is as the Bible says he does, and he does, then what he said about hell, I must accept it for what he said. He preached more on hell than anybody that ever lived on the face of this earth. It is a real place, my friend. It's somewhere that you're headed. If you're a Christ-rejecting, godless, hell-bound sinner, I want you to understand, it's not my doctrine. I didn't create the place. It's what the Bible says. Whether I'm here, whether I'm gone, has nothing to do with the fact there is a hell. And it's where you do not want to go. The Lord Jesus Christ used the strongest term that he could possibly use. He said, yes. Hey, I warn you. He's trying to say to you, you better listen to what he's got to say. Yay, I warn you. Don't go to that place. Yay, I warn you. Fear him. There is one that will take your soul and cast it into hell fire. There is one that holds all power and his name is Jesus. And my friend, when you come to the end of this road and you breathe your last breath, you'll leave planet earth and you're going to go somewhere. Either you're going to go to hell or you're going to go to heaven there is a reality that is called hell there are those that do not believe it exists but five seconds after they die and take their last breath they'll know that hell is real it's a horrible thought to think of the shock that will be upon the soul of so many as they mocked and they made fun. They've laughed in the face of God and they've ridiculed you as a Bible believer. But five seconds after they leave this world, they'll be screaming in hell, fire and damnation. Hell is a place of torment. The Bible said it is weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. And the scripture says it is a place of outer darkness where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. The Bible uses all the terminology to try to get your attention because you're going to leave this world. It's going to be a shock. It'll be a shock to a lot of people. The thing that they made fun of, the word they used over and over and over again in this world will become a reality to them. Hell is a reality. Who goes there, preacher? The lost, the lost, the lost, the lost. He said, I came to seek and save that which is lost. Either you're saved or you're lost. The lost go to hell. Oh, the thought of it, the sound of it. I am lost. I am lost. I am undone. I'm unclean. I'm lost without God. And that's the one that goes to hell. He came to die upon a cross so that you could be saved. Is hell real, preacher? I guarantee you if you leave here without the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll know it for certain. And you won't be able to change one thing about it. You'll be there. There's an experience of a place that is called hell and it's a horrible experience. You say preacher how could a God that loves send us to hell? He doesn't send you. There's no place for you to go but to hell. You can only rise into the presence of God by the Lord Jesus Christ because of who he is and what he's done for you. Hell is a bottomless pit the Bible says and so when a soul dies without God they'll find themselves falling head over heels down deeper and deeper and deeper and the deeper they go the Bible says they go into the lowest hell it talks about a place so deep in hell that the angels that kept not their first estate have been cast into that hell is a place of torment I believe one of the worst torments of hell will be the memories you remember where you've been you remember what life used to be you remember the sunrise and sunset you remember what a cool drink of water was like you remember the sound of children laughing and you remember the word that you heard hell is for Christ rejectors the Bible is quoted more in hell than it is in the pulpits today oh the word how it must work upon the heart of that one who rejected Christ these kids are singing amazing grace if you were to die this morning without God you'll hear that song throughout eternity Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. It didn't save a wretch like me, for I'm in hell. Oh, another chance, God. Just one more opportunity to hear the gospel. Just give me an opportunity. Let me come back one time and I'll be saved. But it's too late now. The finality of hell is one of the worst things about all of it. You can't come back. As you go, that's the way you'll stay. As you leave, that's where you'll be. As you leave this world without God. 
God into hell you'll go head over heels falling falling as the flames rise around you and you burn and you scream and you beg and you're tormented from the presence of God forever the Bible said the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and never I'm only quoting the Bible I didn't make this up I didn't write this book I'm just preaching what the Bible says I know you don't ever hear it but it's the word of the living God it makes salvation sweeter it makes you think about what you got in such a different light when you compare what God did for you and how the blood washed your sins away salvation takes on an entirely new meaning for you've been saved from hell you don't have to go to hell you've been washed in the blood of Christ and hell will not be your home you say preacher is this real that you're talking about is hell really real it's more real than you are friend because they've been in hell for thousands of years and they've been screaming in hell fire and damnation what can I do not to go to hell preacher Jesus 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 that's a name that's in this church that's a name that's in hell I believe right now they're screaming the name of Jesus in hell but it won't do them any good it's where my friend the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched and you continue to fall deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into hell fire and damnation sometime or another when you wind up in the pit it will finally settle into your soul that you're condemned it'll finally grasp you of where you are can you imagine dear friend waking up sometime in such a horrid place like that you've made such a huge mistake you followed the wrong one you listened to your reverend you listened to your professor you listened to men but you won't listen to God the Lord Jesus Christ went to a cross he died a horrible death on that cross he shed his pure blood so that you could be saved he didn't save you to prosper you he didn't save you to make you look great within yourself he didn't save you to make you another religious figure he saved you from hell thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift he saved me from hell he came to me in 1973 and he saved me from hell dear friend have you been saved from hell or are you afraid to die I'll guarantee you they put on a show they act so tough and so strong but the truth of the matter is there is a fear of darkness that pervades the human soul what is tomorrow what does death hold for me is there truly life after death oh they affirm there is none they say for sure they know but my friend if you're a thinking person if you have half a brain you'll say how could you know what lies beyond the grave but I do know I know what the Bible says. It said, fear him. Fear him. Yea, I say to you, fear him. Fear him. Do you fear him? We have our modern theologians so-called who tell you that you don't fear God. Well, let me tell you what that Bible says. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of... You better believe it, friend. Amen. The Lord Jesus said, don't fear him that can destroy the body or kill the body. Yea, I say to you, fear him. Let me read it for you again. Fear him, he said. Yea, I say to you, fear him. I believe that that contrasted with such a horror of what hell is would say to me, preacher, if I fear God, I'm on the right track. You better believe it is. For the fear of the Lord is the beginning of what? And that wisdom will lead you to salvation. If you're arrogant and you make a mock at sin and you run your mouth constantly and you've been pumped up, brainwashed by this culture and you assert there is nothing beyond the grave, I'll have to look at you and say, I'm sorry, you're nothing but a fool. Even if I wasn't even saved, I'd still look at you and say, how can you be so certain that you know what lies beyond the grave? How can you be so sure of the unknowable, yet you've based your whole future on a lie? I can hear it as it bounces off the walls of hell as they scream in dejection and condemnation Lies, lies, lies have been lied to. All lies, lies, lies.
days. The Bible said, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. I've been saved. Ain't going to hell. Hallelujah. Ain't going to hell. I've been washed in the blood of the crucified one. Ain't going to hell. You can't take me to hell. Power's not in your hands. I know whom I have believed. And I'm persuaded he's able to keep that which I've committed to him against that day. I'm not going to hell. I deserve hell. Oh, I worked hard to go there for 27 years. I deserved all the hell God had ever poured on me. But Jesus took my hell and paid my sin debt that I might go free. Now, friend, please listen to me. Some of you will walk out of this house today just like you walked in, completely unsure of where you're headed and your future and the future of your soul. You'll get caught up in this make-believe world around you. These people live in a sham, a contrived, happy existence, staying busy, running and searching for they don't even know what. And they won't stop five minutes to think about where they're going to go when they die. And they could die before the sun goes down. Are you ready? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That's the sweetest name I know, Lord. I know you. And I know you as my Savior. But there's somebody in this house today who heard this. And God, they don't know. And they're worried. And they're fearful. And they're afraid if they die, they go to hell. Oh, it's so wonderful this morning, Jesus, that before they walk out of this house, they can know, they can know they're saved. Holy Ghost, do your work, Lord. Do your work, Holy One. Do your work. I'm just the messenger. Do your work. In Jesus' name, let's stand and sing, brother. Dear friend, I'd run to this altar. I'd run down here and I'd bury my head under something. And I'd cry out to God with everything in me. God, save me. I don't want to go to hell. As you die, that's how you'll stay. Won't you come? Come on. Come on. People are so brainwashed, mesmerized. I can in a trance. TV has put people in a trance. You can't break through to them. It's got you brainwashed. Your mind is completely tied up with the here and the now. And not eternity. I just preached about eternity to you. You could be in eternity tonight. Where will you be? With Jesus or in hell? Let's sing, brother. Yes, sir, a man of amazing grace. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Hallelujah. I was going to hell, but I'm not now. Oh, the grace of God broke through the darkness. Yes, it did. The grace of God got my attention. How precious. How precious. The hour I first believed. Do you remember what it was like when you first believed? Oh, how I love Jesus. Sing on, brother. I've already come.
Talk to him, brother. Talk to him. Be safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. Oh, yes, we'll sing and shout about grace forever. The horror of hell can only be contrasted with the glory of heaven. Sing God's praise. As the life of God unfolds inside your soul and rolls out the future in front of your eyes. As the life of God begins to manifest itself to you in a way that you've never known it before. Then you'll begin to understand, oh, what I was and oh, what I am. How far He brought me from and where He's taken me to. Bless the Lamb. Bless the Lamb. Bless the Lamb. Worthy, worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Salvation was just the beginning of what he'll, cons he'll consummate one day when the glory of God is manifested and that image is permanently stamped in your soul. And you'll never, my friend, be the same again. Heaven is so far above hell as God is above His creation. Sing another verse, brother. Right before I got up to preach, when I was sitting right over here, the power of God came over me and doubled me down. I don't know if any of you were watching me or not, but I couldn't even, I couldn't even raise my head. This was God's way of affirming to me. Now, son, for three days I've carried this. Three days I've carried it on my soul. Three days I've carried this message. This was his way of saying to me, now you do what I've called you to do, and I'm gonna give you what you need. Glory to God, hallelujah. I know that power when it comes down. I know what that is. Somebody heard this morning, maybe your last call, your last opportunity, the last gospel you'll ever hear, and you'll never hear it again. Lord, help you. Don't turn him away. Sing another verse, brother. Won't you come? we have an enemy man do we have an enemy we have an enemy satan has done strange things to me in the last two or three days just strange things because he knew what i was about to preach he came against it but he couldn't stop it the word of god is not bound hallelujah now if you heard the truth this morning you did do something about what you heard you're going to leave this world you're going to leave this world you're going to leave this world unprepared or ready to meet Jesus. Which one will it be? It's your choice. Do you know the most precious thing you have, dear friend? It's not that money in your, in your pocket. It's not that house you own or that car. What would a man profit? What should it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his what? Now, friend, as far as I'm concerned, Apart from your soul, the greatest possession you have is will, volition. You can choose. God gave you that. Now everybody will make a choice. Everybody's made a choice. Everybody in this house has made a choice, including me. We've made choices, every one of us. We'll meet again this evening at 6 o'clock for the evening service. If we're here, if we're not here, you look for me shouting as we're going up. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
I'll pass you shouting as we go up. Don't go to hell. An artist from South Korea was taken to hell by the Lord Jesus himself. This artist has been attending all night prayer meetings since April of 2009 and continues to do so. It has been over one year. As I prayed during these all night meetings, I grew to love Jesus more than ever. One day, Jesus came and said in my heart, I will show you the deeper things of heaven. I thought I was going to visit heaven, but instead I had visited hell. As soon as Jesus spoke into my heart, we entered into the spiritual realm, but Jesus took me and he showed me hell first. As I followed Jesus, I cried the whole time. Spirits of snakes are filled in the alcoholic drinks and in cigarettes that people smoke. Jesus took many people and showed them hell. I see countless people falling into the eternal deep sea of the fire of hell every single day. Tell the people what you have witnessed in hell. Tell the people how awful and gruesome hell is. You must paint the scene of hell as if you are looking through the pain of my aching heart. I then began to hear moans, screams, and wailing sounds. Most people have a misconception about hell. They're deluded and many people think only if you believe in Jesus Christ they will end up in heaven. Some even think that once they die, that will be it, nothing. Many believe as they think, therefore, they live their lives as they desire. As people watch violent, secular movies, demons would actually torment the person's soul without the person realizing or knowing it. As the person watches the scenes from TV, their soul is in torment and in pain. The soul is damaged and wounded. Watching secular TV actually hinders a Christian's loving relationship with God our bridegroom, Jesus. We can watch some news once in a while, but do not watch secular TV. As Jesus witnessed the sins committed by man, he cried. Satan and his demons would tie the bodies of sinners so tight with iron chains and they would control us. Therefore, sinners would go deeper and deeper in sin. I'm pleading with you, do not commit sin. Do not live as you desire. In hell, the senses are hundreds of times more vivid than you actually feel in the physical realm, so the pain is more severe. This drawing shows people falling into the fire of hell. Draw this as if you are looking through my aching heart. As I was painting the scenes of hell, Satan attacked me severely. But I wanted to shout out to the world with Jesus' heart through these paintings. I wanted to deliver the aching heart of Jesus and how he felt so pitiful about those people who are falling down into hell every single day. These drawings show people being tormented on the cross. This shows the result of not wanting to eat the bread of life, God's precious word. This person did not want to eat the bread of life, God's word. This drawing depicts people who disregarded the will of Jesus and made their own decisions and pursued their own will. This drawing shows people who drank, partook in the evil of life, and ate prohibited things. Show the people the consequence of wounding the hearts of their brothers and sisters in Christ by their careless words. They must not be careless with their words. This drawing depicts the consequences of not speaking with care or love. The penalty for lying is severe. Revelation chapter 21 verse 8 states, All liars shall have their part in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 10 states, Do not be deceived. Thieves will not inherit the kingdom of God. People who steal money will be tortured by needles. These next two drawings depict the persecution of the messengers of the full and true gospel of the Most High God. 
This drawing shows how murderers, rapists, and child kidnappers will be tormented. This woman is able to see outside of hell from the inside. She says, If only I could get out of here. But there is no escape from hell. Again, there is no escape from hell. This particular place in hell is for people who have committed sins by their own thoughts that were contrary to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. They are covered by countless maggots. Their whole bodies are wounded by insects. The maggots and insects in hell are so much bigger in size compared to earthly ones. Thousands of maggots and insects are going in and out of this person's mouth, ears, and head. They crawl throughout the entire body. These people were filled with their own thoughts and knowledge that were contrary to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. This place in hell is for people who stubbornly adhere to their own philosophies and deceitful traditions of man and not after Christ. Those people who do not attempt to align their thoughts with God's will end up in hell. We must fix our mind and thoughts on Christ. These are also people who violate God's word and ignore God's commandments. They will be fried on a frying pan in hell that is filled by hell's fire. This part of hell is for people who did not spread or share the gospel. They did not evangelize the lost with the good news of Jesus Christ. This torment is for people who had ignored God's word and continued to commit sin. They are the ones who had performed evil in the eyes of the Lord. This part of hell is for people who complain and grumble, even silently, in their own hearts. This place is for people who had complained and grumbled in their hearts. This place of hell is for men who had a family, but cheated on their spouses or became gay or bisexual. They will be tortured by knives and spears. This drawing shows men who were sexually corrupted. Their private parts will be pierced every second. This hell is for people who worshiped idols, had evil thoughts, and were unbending in their evil ways. Revelation chapter 14 verse 11 states, Hell is endless. The smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever. They have no rest, day or night. If you do not repent, Jesus said in Luke chapter 13, verse 3, I tell you, unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. The woman and the boy in this painting were a mother and son when they lived on earth. But because of the unbearable pain, they did not love each other. Now in hell, they try to escape the torment by stepping on top of each other. Jesus says, Focus on me. Focus only on me. Take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and crucify the flesh. Kill Satan or the devil that is living inside of you. This drawing shows us when we pray before God and repent, the armies of angels will come down and pierce the demons with their swords. Don't go to hell! Charging at 200. Clear! Go, go! Go again! Charging at 300. Clear! We got her! She's back! Oh my God. You're not gonna die! Yes, I am. Let me We're die. not gonna let that happen! Watch that monitor!
Now I've got a clean copy of it now, and uh, I warn you, uh, this could scare you. Here's the email. Dear Art Bell, I just recently began listening to your radio show and could not believe it when you talked about the sounds from hell tonight. My uncle had told me this story a couple of years ago, and I didn't believe him. Like one of your listeners who discounted the story as nothing more than just a religious newspaper fabricated account. The story about the digging of the hole and the hearing of the sounds from hell is very real. It did occur in Siberia. My uncle collected videos and audio tapes and so forth on the paranormal, supernatural. He passed away fairly recently, but he would have loved your show. He let me listen to one of the audio tapes that he had on the sounds from hell in Siberia, and I copied it. He received his copy from a friend who worked at the PBC. It took me a while to find it tonight, but attached is that sound from my uncle's tapes. It's not the greatest quality, but the sounds are there. I was very hesitant to send you this, as the sound bothers me to listen to. I'd suggest that if you do play it on the program, warn listeners in advance so they may have the option of turning the radio off for 30 seconds while it plays. It has always haunted me. To those who discounted the Siberia sounds from Hell's story, it is true, and I, for one, wish it wasn't. Rick, listening from Chicago. And so I submit now the cleaned uh, a better copy to you, and uh, I warn you, what you are about to hear is very disturbing indeed. Revelation 20 And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled and after that he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth, and compassed the camp of the saints about, and the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven, and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, 
and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire, this is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Hello, hope all is well. My name is Khalil, and I want to share with you all, whoever may uh, see this video, um, God willing, everyone that uh, is supposed to see it sees it. Uh, this video is spare of the moment. I um, apologize for not having something more rehearsed. Maybe I'll do it after uh, this one, but I do feel compelled right now in my spirit just to um, make a video unrehearsed and honestly... Uh, feels very important like urgent so i just got to do it and i got to try to be obedient to the spirit whenever i can so anyway make a long story short um i am uh, obviously a follower of jesus christ i uh seen hell uh, the lord showed me hell um in 2008 uh i'm not sure what month of that year but he definitely did uh show me it um obviously i i can't say that i don't try to think about him uh often um I do think about it often. I've had a, a number of, I guess you would call them supernatural experiences, where God has uh, revealed to me certain things. Um, but anyway, make a long story short. Uh, 2008, I was in the uh, vehicle with my uh, wife, and we were leaving a neighborhood that we were staying, staying in, rather, in Charlotte and C. Um, upon leaving the neighborhood, I looked up out the window while she was driving. And I looked up out the window. I didn't tell her. I told her eventually, but I didn't even tell her when I seen it that minute. Um, I wasn't scared because uh, I did feel the presence of God uh, near me. And um, I'm, I wasn't sure why he was showing me. Uh, but obviously it was for a reason. Uh, and God doesn't do anything for, you know, reason, for no reason at all. But anyway, I look up in the sky. And there's a still picture of hell. Still picture, yes. I didn't see anything moving. Um didn't hear any screams i seen uh what is described as the lake of fire what is described like every other uh testimony of uh people claiming to have um seen hell or been to hell even um pretty much the same description uh i did see uh male and females obviously and a lake um a lake that seemed like it was more of a river it was like around a bend type like like curving around I'm going to try to describe it to you best, so um, bear with me if you would. But a lake, more, it seemed like if anything it was, it maybe a river leading into a lake or uh, some, yeah, a river leading into a lake, but it seemed like it was on the shore. And I did see people, again, I seen male and females. Um, I did not see uh, their race or anything. In fact, I didn't even see any eyes, any mouths or anything at all. I, uh, the picture was in black and white. It was a still picture. And uh, I did and I could tell that the people were trying to get out of the lake of fire. They were trying to um, get to the shore. Now, on the shore, the strangest thing, and um, it is what it is. I mean, if you listen to all these testimonies, they're all they're all unreal, to be honest with you. But it is reality. I do believe in my heart. I know in my heart that this is absolutely real um and hell is real uh but anyway there was a demon uh if i can describe the demon it was a um like opposite of an angel pretty much seemed like he was an angel but on the bad side did have wings had his hands or had his looking down at the uh, people in there with his hands crossed as if he was a guard or something um strangely he wasn't pushing any of them but he was standing in between two giant hands. I seen giant hands and arms literally like this. And they the hands itself were bigger than him. 
Um, I am 5'10". Obviously, the hands were bigger than me. If I could use my uh, imagination, I can imagine, I can say probably the hands could push anybody that was like seven foot. It can push them back people-wise. And it can at least push probably about... If you were to <laughs> grab some little uh, Barbie dolls or some little McDonald's men and get about 12 of them for each hand and just keep pushing them back, that's a good description of what I saw. Uh, giant hands, why? I don't know. I didn't see the giant person on where the hands were coming from because, again, it was a picture. I don't know how Jesus did it. I don't know how uh, God showed me. I still don't know. I don't know. I really don't. Um Honestly, I just looked up in the sky and it was a still large picture of hell. He didn't have to tell me it was hell. I knew it was hell. My soul and my heart, I knew it was hell. I'd never seen it, but I knew it. I knew exactly what I was seeing. Another strange part that I uh, noticed were um, creatures inside the lake of fire um, with eyes, sort of like uh, hippo eyes. If you can um, imagine hippos looking out of the water while they're in the lake and all you see is their eyes, I've seen that inside. I mean, I'm not saying, I don't know exactly what they were, uh, what it was, but again, that's the only thing that I can describe it uh, as far as now they weren't burning, of course. I'm assuming they, you know, had something to do with that torture in there, but um, for you people that like to hear, you know, scripture behind it, you know what I mean? Uh, simple Revelations 21 and 8. I mean, that's it. Um, that is the most authentic, you know what I mean, description besides all the other ones that's in the Bible. But, you know, that one specifically talks about uh, their proportion will be in the lake that burns. With fire, sulfur, which is the second death. And that's one that comes close of it because it talks about liars, adulterers, uh, sexual immorality, and uh, murderers, things that I saw. But read that. I mean, that's just for people, you know, just for those people who just got to, <clears throat> you know, hard at heart, don't want to believe. You know what I mean? And, and I'm not sitting here saying that it's something to just believe. I mean, let's face it. You know what I mean? I don't care who you are. On a spiritual level, if you're on earth, you're on earth. And while you're on earth, this is the reality. What's the reality? Our natural. This is our senses. And with that being said, sometimes it can be a little challenging to uh, receive spiritual insight or, in, you know, I mean, be enlightened by spiritual things. So, you know, I'm not knocking you, but at the end of the day, man, the evidence is there, man. Um, it's there. Again, I don't know why. Well, I do know why. You know, what I mean, I'm supposed to. It's just, I guess, I never had. The urge to actually make it publicly known, um, but by way of uh, YouTube as of now, and I guess I'll start, you know, telling people as the Holy Spirit leads me to. Um, I didn't get saved once I seen hell. I was saved prior to, so that didn't make me, uh, you know, give my life to Christ. Um, again, I mean, I'm saved. You know, I mean, even if I, even though I seen that, I still, I didn't get scared or anything. As if I was going because I wasn't under the impression I was going. I just seen hell. That's the only thing I can say. I seen it. So um, again, it's out here. I don't know what this is for. I mean, I'll, hopefully it'll reach you. And you know, as usual, I just recommend that you find Christ. That you give your life to Christ. That you always repent. Always repent as the Holy Spirit lets it known. To you, even us as believers, the ones that's already in the faith, we have to always, always repent, always be striving, pressing towards the high calling of Jesus Christ. Amen.